Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight we are going to continue with Night Marathon in the 12th video, I believe, <laughs> in this series. We should do some catching up for the next about 15 days straight, so I will be posting through the weekend as well, because I know we have fallen a little bit behind, but, um, you know work and things got in the way and I had to take a short couple day break but I am back at it. So before we get going with tonight's ghost stories which is the theme of this one because it's October and you can't get too many ghost stories in October, um, I wanted to let you guys know who didn't see it in the community tab that I have designed lovely listener enamel pins. So we officially have like merch, I guess. <laughs> um, but I was designing some enamel pins that go with a, an art project that I'm doing next year, kind of starting it this year. And I, you know, for those of you who know, I have an art channel, or sorry, for those of you who don't know, um, I have an art channel. I haven't been very active on it, but I am picking up with that again. And um, I was uh, playing around with enamel pin designs and I thought, hmm, that would be a really cool thing to do to have like a lovely listener pin. And uh, I just started playing around with ideas and then, you know, before you knew it, I had an idea I really liked. so. I posted a picture of it in the community tab and I will post it here on the screen for a while and um, basically the teal in the design, the teal color is uh, glow in the dark and the black is glitter and then anything that's gray is going to be like an antique metal. So um, it's an enamel pin and it is up in the brand new, very empty and sad looking <laughs> Shopify store, which I will try to um, make look a little bit better in the next um, couple of weeks and months, but um, but it's functional and um, several of you have already pre-ordered the pin, so thank you so much. So if you want to pre-order the pin, you can do so. I will only be making 100 of this particular design. Um, there will always be a like current lovely listener pin, but I'm only going to make them in sets of 100. So there will only be 100 of these and um, yeah, uh, a couple of you have already um, pre-ordered it. So I. I'm supposed to get them in about three weeks. They told me that the uh, manufacturer said they should be shipping them around the 28th of October, which means I'll probably get them a week after that. And then I need to put all of them on their backing and package them and all that. So I anticipate about four to six weeks before I can ship them out. But the link is there if you are interested. I will also start putting some of my like horror related artwork and uh, prints and stuff in there just because that's a better place for it. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I oh, oh, and I will put, um, I'll put an image up here as well. I also designed a Nevermore pen for those of us who love Poe, which I'm pretty sure is like all of us here. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be, I mean, I'm sure I'll be making that pin in the future, but I don't know when it will be available because I need to get through this run first, but that one is coming next. So let me know in the comments if you think that one is interesting um, as well. So anyway, that was a super long introduction and I'm very sorry. I know, I know it's a very lengthy intro, but I'm very excited about this and I just wanted to let you guys know that it exists. So there we are. Um, onward now with the stories if you're still here thank you so much for sitting through that um and uh, yes let's continue so without further ado at long last get comfortable grab a beverage of choice or a snack and get ready to take another journey into the night Long story short, multiple people who are not friends with one another have been in my house and have seen a woman in a blue dress and then told me about it later. I don't tell anyone else about it, not even my husband, because it doesn't bother anything, so no big deal, right? Anywho, I myself have seen her twice. 
The first time I woke up in the middle of the night and saw her leaning over the baby's crib, I immediately sat up and she just faded away. I felt crazy because at the time I didn't know that anybody else had seen her. The next day I went to Walmart and some lady walks by me and says, she likes the baby. I stop and ask what she said and she says, the woman in your house, she likes the baby. I low key peed my pants and ran all the way home. I used to do house cleaning for a young couple. The husband worked out of town and they had three really young kids. I'd generally come in once a month or so, whenever the place got really bad. The woman had mentioned beforehand that there were some paranormal events going on. She didn't tell me what they were because she also wanted me to come in at some point and do a clearing on the house. Yes, I clean houses, but I also do clearings. She was hoping to get some confirmation of what she and her family were picking up on. The first time I cleaned for them, I did a walkthrough and felt nothing until I got down to the basement level. There was a family room down there and also a bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. Her five-year-old slept in this room and made a nightmare mess in the bathroom. Toothpaste, crayons all over the walls, wet toilet paper all over the floor. It was a mess. I could feel a man in the bathroom watching me. He didn't seem malevolent in any way, just watchful. It felt like he was in his thirties, maybe. I kind of felt watched in the family room, but it didn't feel like the man. It kind of felt like a woman, maybe. Again, just watchful. Other than that, the house felt fine, totally clear and very positive. The woman confirmed that her daughter always saw a dark man standing in her bathroom, so that was confirmation for them. The mom had seen a man on horseback in the living room once. The house was less than 10 years old and the whole area had previously been farmland. One day, the woman took her kids out of town for the long weekend, but wanted me to stay and do a cleaning. She hid her house keys in the kid's wagon in the front yard. She asked me to be careful to put the keys back in the wagon as this was the only set she had. I came in and cleaned both lower levels, then started in upstairs in the master bedroom. I was in the process of cleaning the ensuite bathroom when I heard people talking down in the main entrance. The area was tiled with a big set of stairs going up to the bedrooms so their voices carried and were quite loud. I 100% believed that it was relatives of the woman. I could hear them talking about her. They mentioned her name and said that she was out of town. It sounded like one woman and two men. One of the men sounded very elderly, so I was thinking her parents and her grandfather. The woman was the loudest and seemed in charge. I heard them talk about me. The woman said, oh, she's cleaning the house for Sarah. I also heard her say something about the house keys. I had put them beside my purse on a little shelf or niche by the front door. I felt a little self-conscious being upstairs while they were standing there talking about me, so I took off my gloves and went downstairs to introduce myself. When I got downstairs, there was no one there. I hadn't heard the door close nor had I heard it open to begin with, the door was locked. The crazy thing was, there should have been melting snow and dirt on the floors. It was winter and three people coming into a house and standing in the front entrance would have left a puddle on the floor. I had already vacuumed and mopped the whole area. I was amazed and really excited 
I wasn't frightened in the least. They felt very parental and protective of the family. I was excited to tell my client what I had experienced. I went back upstairs and finished cleaning. When I went to leave, the keys were gone. I know for certain that I had left them on the shelf by my purse. In fact, it sounded like the ghosts had seen them too, since they mentioned them. I ended up spending an extra hour and 45 minutes looking for those dang keys. I called out to the ghosts, begged the ghosts, got mad at the ghosts, tried to bargain with them, all to no avail. I didn't have my client's cell phone number handy, only her landline. The lock was deadbolt, so I couldn't lock it without the keys. The back door was also a deadbolt. I had no numbers for any relatives. I was envisioning having to spend the entire weekend staying in that haunted house alone. At this point, I was feeling a little scared, not wanting to sleep there. I searched everywhere, all three levels, under the couch cushions, in the kitchen drawers and cupboards, the kids' rooms where the toys are. I did a thorough check of the basement bathroom and even looked outside where the keys had originally been. I was going to give up when I thought that I would recheck the basket on the kitchen counter. It had bread buns and other things in it, and at the bottom of the basket there were some old flyers. The keys were neatly sitting on top of the flyers, under the bread. There was no way that I could have missed them the first time. The keychain had a big gummy flip-flop and a mini Tupperware container on it. I got out of there and locked the door behind me, so relieved to not have to stay there. When I told the woman after she got back, she said that they often had important things go missing, her husband more than her. She also said that her husband had heard people talking before, but that she hadn't. I feel like maybe they really liked her, but weren't so sure about other people. I'm not sure if this was a paranormal experience, but I have no other way to describe it. I am a believer in the paranormal, and while I'll try to find a logical explanation for any occurrence, I do feel like I've had some experiences that I just can't explain. Anyway, I used to live in a city close to the coast. My friend lived in one of the towns outside of the city, and her house was a straight road from the beach. A few of us had decided to go for a walk along the beach at night. I can't remember how late it was, but it was dark. To get to the beach, you had to go down a lot of steps, and above was like a promenade. My friend parked her car in a car park, and we walked along the promenade for a while before heading down onto the beach. Once on the beach, we turned back on ourselves and started walking back the way we had come so that we would eventually arrive back where we had parked the car. It was dark, but not pitch black because there were street lights on from the road or promenade above us. The walk was good. We just spent the time chatting and eventually we arrived at the steps that we would have to climb to get back to the car park. We all stop and look down at the shore, and we're quiet for a minute. I'm looking at the water and I see something strange. It looked like a person moving in a really erratic way, back and forth in circles. It's really far down, where the water meets the shore, maybe a few hundred meters away. I'm straining my eyes, trying to work out if they're playing tricks on me, when my friend asks if we can see what she's seeing, something felt off, like a feeling of dread almost, but we all just stood there, watching this person moving in the shallow water, talking to each other about how weird it is. It was hard to tell if it was even a person, to be honest. It looked like a dark figure, but for a while we mused that perhaps it was just something bobbing in the water. 
Whatever it was, we all felt very uneasy. Suddenly, this thing or person starts toward us at a speed which was not natural. We all started running up the steps to the car park. The relief that I felt when we got into the car was like nothing else. We quickly drove back to our friend's house where we spent the rest of the night talking about what we had seen. Honestly, I'm still scared of this thing, and that was 13 or 14 years ago. It makes me feel so uneasy to think back about this black figure moving toward us at such an alarming pace. About two years ago, my older brother Richard and I had taken a Friday off of work to go and view a house that we were thinking of purchasing, renovating, and selling on. The house itself was located in Ireland, and we had decided that we would fly over on the Friday and back on the Sunday so we could get a decent chance to survey the area. Anyone who's flown a UK mainland to Northern Ireland flight before knows that the planes are often small and rickety, and don't provide a great amount of confidence to any passenger who's afraid of flying. Unluckily for me, my brother is petrified. So after already drinking himself into a stupor, we decided to move to the back of the near-empty plane, as I had read that statistically, there's a greater chance of survival if you're sat at the rear. Also, I had started to notice an odd man in his late 50s turning around in his chair, staring at us. And whilst this was understandable due to my brother's behavior, something felt off, and I didn't fancy being caught amidst a fight, so we moved. I should also mention that at this time in my brother's life, he was going through a messy divorce and his ex-wife was attempting to take custody of my nephews. About 15 minutes after sitting down in our new seats and me looking out the window while my brother sleeps, I feel an odd sensation, the hair raising on the back of my neck, the feeling of being watched. And surely enough, the man from the front of the plane was now in the seat across from ours, sat at an angle so he could face my brother. I don't know what to do at this point, and being tired and grumpy, I just said, what? And I stared this guy down. I can see that he's debating something internally, and looks at my brother again before getting up and almost whispering, saying, sorry for your loss, to which I mutter something to the effect of freaking nutter, and I watch him walk back down the aisle to his seat, where he once again cranes his neck to watch my brother. Shortly after we land and regain signal, my brother informs me that he's had over 50 missed phone calls and text notifications. His ex-wife and one of his sons, Darren, had sadly been involved in a fatal RTC. Richard, my brother, only vaguely remembers seeing the man on the plane and understandably he doesn't like to talk about it. This has always left me disturbed. How did he know? And who was he? It was the first night in my first apartment. I didn't have a bed, so I slept on the couch in the living room. I had a nightmare that someone with a knife was going down the hallway. Just as they got to the living room door, I woke up. I jumped in my car and I spent one more night at my parents. Two months later, my roommate falls asleep on the same couch. The next morning, he tells me about a dream he had, about a guy coming down the hall with a knife, and just as he got to the door, my roommate woke up. A few months later, a friend asks if he can crash for the night. Sure, he can sleep on the couch. Next morning, he says he had a weird dream. I said, let me guess, a guy was coming down the hall with a knife? 
My roommate added, and you woke up just as he got to the door, right? This dude went the palest shade of white I have ever seen. When I was six or seven, I was going to the bathroom, not bothering to close the door because no one else was home. My parents' room was directly across a narrow hallway from the bathroom, with their door being pretty close to being entirely open, with only clothes keeping it pushed slightly outward. From where I was, I could see the foot of my parents' bed, the wall on the left side of their bed, and the wall which the door was against, being nearly fully open, if that makes sense. Sitting silently, I see a black dress, with no figure inside, rise up from behind the left side of my parents' bed, proceed to float out to the front of the foot of the bed, appearing to float directly towards me, and float behind my parents' bedroom door, completely silent, no body, no legs, no feet, no nothing, just a black dress. It floated, not slowly, but not too quickly, like it didn't even know I was there, and was just casually floating through the house. I was super freaked out. I finished my business and quickly jumped across the hall and slammed the door the other way, screaming out of fear and an attempt to be threatening. But nothing was there, besides my mom's robes and pajamas. Since then, I was sure to close the door every time I went to the bathroom, and only recently have I begun going with the door open if no one else is home. And every time I do, the thought of that floating black dress goes through my head. I've had a lot of weird paranormal things happen to me, but there's one story that creeps me out more than the others. I was about 13, sleeping over at my friend's mom's house. She lived in a duplex that the family had lived in for over 40 years. She had a couple of kid cousins over that weekend, so I didn't think of it when I saw a small blonde boy in a striped tee come around the corner and peek into the room we were hanging out in. My friend asked me who I had just waved to, and I said, oh, just one of your little cousins. The next morning, we went to the other side of the duplex where her grandparents lived, and I saw a picture on the wall of the little blonde boy with a striped tee on. It said, in memory of. I got a chill and asked her who it was, and she said, oh, that's my uncle. He got hit by a car right outside the house when he was seven, in the 80s. Why? I told her, that's the exact little boy I saw outside your room last night. She was completely unfazed and just said, yeah, he likes to say hi to the family sometimes. I'm convinced that the house I lived in during my freshman year of college was haunted. I also swear that this is 100% true. I don't usually talk about it because it sounds ridiculous, but it happened and I can't explain it. The house was 120 years old. My room had a door to the attic that I kept locked. I had four other roommates who all swear that they weren't messing with me. I was laying in bed one day and I heard a super loud crash behind the door of the attic. I grabbed my big male roommate and we opened the door together. At the bottom of the steps, there were six awkwardly shallow steps leading to a bunch of that pink foam stuff and your typical attic, there was an old painting of some lady. We were pretty creeped out. Nobody had ever seen the painting before, let alone gone into the creepy attic. We put the painting in the corner of the attic where it could not fall and didn't think about it again. A few months later, I heard the same crash, 
I figured that I dreamed it or imagined it. Again, I opened the door and found the painting sitting there. This time, I moved the painting into the basement. There were some shelves and I just threw it in the back of the top shelf. A couple more months went by. Yet again, late one night, I heard the crash from behind the attic door. I thought to myself, no freaking way. I grabbed my roommate again and we opened the door. And there it was. That damn painting was sitting at the bottom of the steps again. I don't understand how. I kept the door to my room locked as well as the door to the attic. My roommates couldn't have gotten in there to play a prank. I truly don't understand it. After the third time, we took the painting out to the fire pit and burned it. Thankfully, all the creepy stuff stopped there. I moved out of that house as soon as the lease was up. I can't explain what happened. I just know it was creepy and you could not convince me to go back there. When I was 11, I went to the Philippines with my mom to meet family for a few weeks. The stay was pretty normal, nothing strange going on except for one night. I remember it because it was blistering hot and I was constantly sweating in my bed. The place we were staying at was my grandmother's home, a small two-story house with about nine people living there mainly my mom, sister, and her family. The room that me and my mom shared had no door and had a view to the balcony at the end of the hallway. The night in question, I woke up for no reason. It was pretty late, around 3 a.m. My bed had a perfect view of the hallway, all the way down to the balcony, and standing there was a boy or what I assumed was a boy. At first, I thought it was my cousin, Jeebi, so I called to him. Hey, why are you up? I got no response, so I rolled over to go back to sleep, but this nagging feeling kept bugging me, and I realized that it got sort of cold, although not freezing. It was noticeably more comfortable now compared to how hot it had been. So I rolled back over, and I noticed that the boy was still standing there, and that's when alarm bells began ringing. GB, go to bed. You're freaking me out, I yell. The sound of my voice wakes my mom up, and she looks at me, asking why I was yelling in the middle of the night. She told me I was going to wake the whole neighborhood up. At this point, I tell her to go tell GB to go to bed because he's bothering me. She looks confused and said, GB is asleep. What do you mean? Then I said, look by the balcony. He's right there. Don't you see him? I point down the hall at the boy who is this entire time just stood there watching us. My mom thinks I'm playing some kind of game and says, there's no one there. Go to bed. At this point, I'm freaking out and I beg my mom to make sure that my cousin is in bed. Seeing how distraught I was, she gets up and goes to look. She turns the hallway on. Mind you, the boy is still standing there watching all of this. She walks down the hall, through the boy, and goes to check on her sister and her kids and confirms that they were all there. So she walks back to the room again and walks straight through the boy for a second time. It was by this point that I realized the boy had no face, so I just kind of shut down. My mom said it was a little bit chilly that night and told me not to get sick since the clothes I wore were wet with sweat. Then she just turned off the hallway lights and laid back down and went to sleep. I just stared at the boy in silent horror, too young to really understand what was going on. And as we had a staring contest, eventually I blinked and he was gone. I tried telling everyone what I saw in the morning, but none of my aunts, uncles, or cousins cared. 
Though my mom was sort of freaked out by it because she is a believer in the supernatural. It was my grandmother who supplied answers. You probably saw your grandfather, she tells me after she finished listening to my story. He did something like that with your sister when she came a few years ago. He always likes to tease when he was alive. Don't be too bothered by it. Consider it good luck. Honestly, I still don't know how to feel about it. A few years ago, I had been out of work for three months and had pretty much given up hope. On top of that, I had been getting about 20 to 30 spam calls every day, so I had turned off my phone. I was taking a post-lunch nap when I felt a hand grip my shoulder and gently shake me awake, with a voice saying, answer your phone. I staggered up and went to my desk and turned on my phone before realizing what had happened. Around 15 minutes later, I got a call from a recruiter who had been given my name by a former coworker. I went in for the interview, aced it, and I'm still at the job. I've had other weird experiences. We live a couple of blocks from the city cemetery. I'm positive that we have uh, tourists coming through, but I don't know if they're bored lost or trying to communicate. When I was growing up, my mom had a wicker or straw angel decoration. It was as big as I was as an eight-year-old kid, and for some reason, I always hated it. I mean, it was creepy, yes, but I got a weird and bad feeling in the pit of my stomach every time I looked at it or had to pass by it, and I always felt like it was watching me. When my parents divorced, my mom, of course, brought the angel with her when she moved out, and in our new house, there was a wall in the living room that had a rectangle cut out so you could see through it. My mom hung the thing up in there, so it was just kind of hanging in free space. With it being in there, I swear to God it would move on its own. There were no vents or anything near it to move it if the furnace came on. One time I was sitting on the stairs. The stairs were across from the cutout wall with a set of two more stairs going down between them and I would see the angel originally being perfectly still slowly turn almost with intention all the way to face me and then abruptly stop, becoming absolutely still once more. It totally freaked me out. It happened on multiple occasions, but I don't know how to explain why or how it happened. I mean, maybe I just had an overactive imagination, but it was really, really weird. You can call it BS all you want, but I know what I saw. My house used to be the largest on the lot before our town expanded. It was the largest because it was a funeral home. They sealed off the room with plaster walls where they would prepare the bodies, though underneath the carpet in my parents' room is a hatch to it. I have seen plenty of things, heard plenty of things, and friends and family have said that they have all seen things as well. We have a spirit, a ghost, whichever you want to call it, that lives here. Her name is Abigail. She's a trickster, and she likes to hide things, move things, open doors, or sometimes tease our dogs. Whenever my aunt comes to visit with her family, small items tend to go missing. Items like her toothbrush that she set by the sink just two minutes prior. The things here, and there are a few, aren't as active anymore, or maybe I just don't notice them as much, but it was certainly an interesting experience growing up there. My mother passed when I was 22. 
It was an accident and a shock. My husband and I went three states away to stay at her house for a bit to pack things up and settle her estate. I have always had really bad problems with my sinuses. Well, the stress and everything got me sick and I had a horrible sinus infection. I had medicine and I was on the couch crying after looking everywhere for it. My husband was sitting next to me, holding me. Then we looked over on the table where the Bible was opened up and the meds were sitting on the open Bible. The Bible had been there earlier, closed. I remember sitting it there myself. My husband started freaking out because on the page it was open to a verse which was underlined. It was the only underlined verse in the entire Bible and it said, and the grieving shall be comforted. I usually wouldn't put any credence in this. I was sick and a mess, but my husband was not, and he's a very level-headed person when it comes to things like this. Quite a few other things happened for a while after that. I like to think that my mother was trying to help me cope. I really hope that she finally found peace. I did. I've had many paranormal experiences since I was a kid. The one that freaked me out the most, though, actually happened just a few months ago. I'm only 16. I don't like sleeping in my room, so I sleep on the couch in the living room. It's my choice, and it's actually really comfortable. I also suffer from insomnia, and I have trouble staying asleep. This being said, I'm normally awake when my dad gets up for work at 4 in the morning, and I'll wish him a good day at work and such. I was trying to sleep, but I woke up. Having gone through this many times, I just kept my eyes shut. Then I felt something that felt like a leg lean against the side of the couch and hover over me. And then I heard heavy, low breathing. It was so loud and sounded like a man, so I naturally assumed it was my dad. Since I thought he was trying to check if I was awake, I whipped around and opened my eyes to try to scare him, but nothing was there. I was so confused that I just sort of sat there for a few moments, thinking about what just happened. I have never been able to come up with an explanation for what happened that day. I used to work at a haunted hotel at the front desk. There was a room behind the front desk where you could sit when it was late and no one was in the lobby. There was a TV with the security cameras, including one on the front desk, so you could see if anybody was out there. You could see the whole front desk, including the classic bell that people ring for service. A coworker and I were sitting in the back room, no one up front, and the bell rang. No one, and I mean no one, was out there. Over the next hour, the bell rang six or seven more times, but only ever when we were in the back. I don't believe in ghosts, but that was weird. This was a nice four diamond old hotel that had huge ballrooms and dining rooms that I had to walk through late at night when I was alone. When I worked overnights after that as the only employee in the hotel, I would definitely get freaked out. Although, other than the bell thing, I never saw anything else supernatural. Welcome back. I do hope you guys enjoyed those stories. They weren't quite as terrifying as some of the other ones that we have been enjoying together during Night Marathon, but I thought they were a good collection of little stories there. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed them. 
Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you who have subscribed and commented and watched the videos and liked them and shared them and um, whatever else you've been doing. Uh, I just really appreciate all of you. Um, also, of course, thank you to the patrons and people who have pre-ordered the pins and if you've done anything to support the channel in any way, whether it's just, you know, with watch time or sharing a video or whatever, um, I'm just really grateful to have all of you here and uh, I'm really excited about the little community that we've been building here. So uh, I just wanted to take a second and thank you guys for being here. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, we have that pin, which is enamel pin, which is available on pre-order. I am so excited to see them in person. Um, and uh, so that link is down below if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I will be back very shortly with a new video. I believe the next topic on my list was camping stories. It had something to do with the wilderness. Um, I have really been enjoying uh, the wilderness stories and I know that a lot of you guys have been as well. So lots more content to come and uh, if you're watching this and you enjoyed it and you haven't yet subscribed and um, my analytics tell me that over 50% of you listen but you don't subscribe, um, maybe maybe make tonight the day that you that you subscribe and become an official lovely listener because we would love to have you here <laughs> and do make sure to ring that bell so that you don't miss any notifications whatsoever thank you guys so much for being here i will see you guys in the next one bye for now Ooh.